Welcome back to SnowRunner. As you can see from the title screen, we have now moved on to Smithfield Dam. We will be completing contracts and tasks here for the foreseeable future. Before we start that though, I wanted to have a look at the player profile screen. I just wanted to run through some of the information you can find here. Let's see what happens when we select Michigan. So this screen covers how many vehicles found, how many watchtowers opened up, how many upgrades you've found. It also shows you the missions finished, the number of vehicles you own, payments received and distance travelled. You can also find out how many experience points you've got. This is handy if you're chasing after a goal like I am, I'm trying to get to level 8. You can see how many experience points you need to get to that next level. The next page is contracts. Keeping Michigan selected, it shows you which contracts you've completed and which ones you still need to complete. But it also shows you what cargo you need for each mission that you haven't completed yet. This can really help with your planning. The next tab is tasks. Like the contracts tab, this shows you what you've completed and what you still need to complete. Both the contracts and task tabs cover the entirety of the Michigan region. This means that you can see the tasks and contracts for every map in Michigan. You can use this tab, for example, if you discover a task by opening a watchtower, you can come to this page, select the task that you've just discovered, and you can see exactly what you need to complete this task. This can be a real time saver, as it saves you having to travel to the task, then go and collect the cargo, and then travel back to the same location again. It just helps stop the toing and froing. I do hope you found this helpful, and that you've got a greater appreciation of the player profile page. On with the episode. Even though we find ourselves in Smithfield Dam, I have to make another trip back to Black River. I've selected the Winter Stores contract. This has us delivering a maintenance trailer and some vehicle spare parts to the logistics base in Smithfield Dam. So I've come back to Black River to collect the maintenance trailer. There's also a task ahead in Smithfield Dam which involves fixing a bridge for which I need some wooden planks. I'll collect those from the lumber mill, then move over to the drilling site to collect the maintenance trailer, and then head to the garage in Smithfield Dam. I'm going to plan my route out on the map, and then get going. I'm going to head north from the drilling site, as I know the Fleet Star can handle that way easily. And I find this route a bit more interesting than going back to the town. I'm going to pick the Fleet Star and get going on the route to the lumber mill. As you've seen the routes many times, I'll cut here and we'll come back when we've loaded the wood on at the lumber mill. That's the wooden planks loaded. We'll now make our way to the drilling site so we can collect the maintenance trailer. I'm going to hit overdrive and I'll be back when we're at the garage in Smithfield Dam.
I'm going to park up, leave the trailer and the cargo and come back to this later. This is for two reasons. The first is I'm still waiting to reach rank 8 so I can upgrade my tyres to off-road ones. The track to the logistics base is very muddy and while it's possible to reach it with these tyres it's much easier with off-road ones. Second, a lot of the map is still black, the fog of war. So what I want to do is open up the watchtowers. In other words, do a bit of scouting. This is important when coming to a new map as it opens it up and lets you see the routes that you need to take to complete the contracts and tasks. I usually like to scout in sections. So I'm aiming to open the watchtowers to the west opening up the way to the logistics base. I'm going to start with the one closest to the garage. It makes sense and it will open up the middle of the map. Then I'm going to make my way towards the farm, then over to the one near the logistics base. It's always difficult planning routes when you can't see where you're going. Driving a bit, then opening the map will help you find your way. Scouting requires a scout truck and I'm going to use the Chevy for this. We've got mud tyres and extra fuel on board but what I find is handy as we're going to be travelling some long distances is loading up with a scout fuel trailer. This drastically increases our range and also saves us from the embarrassing situation of running out of fuel just before we reach a watchtower. That's the trailer hooked up. Now let's get moving to our first watchtower. I find scouting really fun. The scout truck can fit into places where your big trucks can't fit, but also go where your big trucks cannot go either. There's some other reasons why you might want to scout out a map first. For every watchtower you open, you get XP. This is going to help me reach my goal of rank 8. We can also make sure we activate any tasks we find along the way. We can also set up some pre-logistical supplies that will help us with tasks and contracts in distant locations. This becomes more important in SnowRunner as you get deeper into the game and take on more difficult regions and maps. Let's speed things up a bit by going into overdrive again. That's the first watchtower opened. It looks like we discovered an upgrade location as well. We can also activate a nice little cinematic showing the surroundings around the watchtower. With the watchtower opened, we can see a lot more of our surroundings. We can also see where the upgrade is located. Opening the watchtowers also gives us some more tasks. I might as well grab the upgrades as I'm on a road of discovery. As always, I'll plan the route and then I'll hit overdrive. Yes, I'm still forgetting to take my handbrake off.
I've left the fuel trailer behind to make it easier to get up this incline. We've got the upgrade in sight. This is definitely a fun climb. And we're there. Let's see what we've got. An upgraded engine. Looks like it's for the scout trucks. The list shows which models can use this engine. Thank you very much. Next, I'm going to head to the watchtower in the lower left corner of the screen. We'll go via the farm, which we've been to before. After that, we're going to have to kind of find our way there. Okay, let's get ourselves turned round. Hopefully I can do a nice three-pointer. That wasn't too bad. I'll just negotiate. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Just when you think everything's going all right. Okay, look for a suitable winch point. That'll do. And back on four wheels. This is where the autonomous winch really comes into its own. I'm just going to descend a little bit slowly down here so it doesn't happen again. I'll also collect the fuel trailer on the way back down. Let's go into overdrive again. Watchtower in sight. We'll need to take a cheeky right here. And that's the second watchtower opened. You can also see we get 50 XP for that as well. Another upgrade location discovered. And new objectives. As you can see from the map, we now have some new tasks and an upgrade location. I'm going to take the lower path towards the next watchtower. On the way, 
I'll stop off at the drilling site as well. As you'll see, this track is okay for scouts, but it might be a tad dangerous for trucks. I forget to mark out a route before I start. I do rectify this later, but we can see the path all the way to the drilling site. Let's get back in the driving seat and get going. I'll hit overdrive again and we'll join back up when we're closer to the drilling site. That track was hard work, but we've made it to the drilling site. I'm going to detach the fuel trailer and leave it here so it can be used for future operations. I'll finish off by topping off the fuel tank. We've covered quite a lot of ground in this episode and it's beginning to get a little long. We'll tackle the third watchtower in the next episode. I do hope you've enjoyed this one and that it's helped you find your way around the map. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.